Hello, welcome to Aero Bandwidth, your source for everything you need to know about the technologies, trends, and concepts that are steering our industry today. We hope that you enjoy this episode, and if you do, please subscribe. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Aero Bandwidth. I'll be your host today. My name is Timur Rasik, Technical Solutions Manager here at Aero Electronics. I've got Benjamin McGuire, who's my co-host today. Ben, say hi. Hey, guys. Um, excited to be here on the podcast. I'm uh, the uh, solutions architect for Veeam, as well as a couple of other emerging technologies. And uh, just really excited about the topics and uh, that we're going to discuss today. Fantastic. And we have a very special guest here with us from Veeam. We've got Kevin Scott Carafa. He's the National Technical Partner Manager. Uh, Kevin, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself today? Hey, thanks for having Thanks for having me. So, yeah, so I spent majority of my life in Michigan, Michigan native, and I've been traveling out to Silicon Valley for the last you know, good part of 26 years. Started out in network attached storage, working for GM in the Detroit area, and spent about 20 years at NetApp, a short stint at Western Digital, and learned a lot about data and all that time. And then took a glance at Veeam and data protection, and it's really been a great experience. A lot of exposure, of course, Veeam does everything with partners, so that's my whole background at that point. I, I am 6'6", six, six, I have four boys, and a wife I've been married to for 26 years, and my boys are as big as I am. I Just adversity in general going to Silicon Valley, when, you, when you're in Grand Rapids, Michigan, you tell people you spent 20, you know, a good part of 26 years in Silicon Valley, they, they look at that and question that, but uh, it, it's, it's been a great time. Glad to be here. Awesome. Sounds like you've been around the block and uh, no order is too tall for you, Mr. 6'6". <laughs> so, <laughs> we appreciate your time and thank you for joining us. So, um, you know, Veeam has been a very important partner of Aero. Uh, they've shown great growth and progression over the years. But for some reason, it still seems that Veeam is known as an SMB backup company. But for us three here, we know that Veeam does so much more than that. Uh, Kevin, do you want to tell us a little bit more about what's new with Veeam these days and what they're doing? Sure. So uh, address the SMB backup company uh, as an overview. So we have 375,000 customers now at Veeam. Wow. Last year we did 1.2 billion in revenue. So only 34 companies in the history of the world have done that. So you look at a Oracle, a Microsoft, a Google. So that concept really takes you into a different market. We were acquired officially at the end of February for $5 billion by an investment firm that really wants to grow Veeam. So the SMB play and what we do, you know, there's so much more that we do in enterprise. But what's active today really is, you know, I'd like to discuss three main things. Awareness and protection in the current crisis that we're dealing with as a world. Ransomware protection because there is just an onslaught of cyber activity going on right now. And then really a lot of organizations have moved in this crisis. They've moved their infrastructure outside of their core, whether that be at the edge or all the way into cloud. So that really, I'd love to talk about those three things. Definitely. Those all sound like great points. Ben, what have you been hearing about like awareness and protection currently, just with the grand scheme of things going on in the world these days? Oh, I mean, it's just to kind of recap what Kevin was talking about. I mean, it's just the amount of uh, cyber criminal activity has just gone up. I've even gotten stuff in my personal email inbox that, uh, you know, I'm pretty good at checking out uh, phishing emails. And a lot of the new stuff that's coming out is it's fine tuned. It's harder to catch. Uh, and being able to deploy, you know, a lot of Veeam's capabilities uh, is going to be a key thing in the in the coming days to catch those. Got it. Then it seems like, I mean, there's a lot of products out there that just let you know there's an issue, but that only seems like you're only solving half the battle. Kevin, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Sure. So if, if you look at what we're doing at Veeam, we had a, a latest release called V10 that released on February 18th. And just talking about Veeam just for a second about what we do on a software site. So we're all software. Our revenue numbers were zero last year. We do all our business through partners. So understanding what our competitors do in this space, and I understand we need competitors for business, makes a lot of sense. Where Veeam excels in this is we release software stacks that do things really, really well. And unlike other companies, 
usually when a new software stack comes out and release, people delay, customers delay, partners delay talking about it, or there's a, a, a slow momentum. Not with Veeam. In the last two months since we released our software, 50,000, 75,000 downloads of customers putting it in production. So here's the difference maker. So we have a product called Veeam One. It's our backup reporting monitoring agent software. The key here is that our competitors let you know as a customer, they let you know there's an issue. There's a, either a CPU or higher activity going on in the organization. They don't tell you how to fix it. The difference with Veeam is we not only tell you that, hey, it looks like there's an issue on this VM, but here's the steps you can take not having to buy another product to actually go through and recover from that, either instantly, in seconds, minutes, or a step-by-step -step process to do that. So the scenario I like to talk about in that and just reporting, we have a product called Virtual Labs, Data Labs as it's called before, and I talk about the paycheck scenario. So let's pick on, I'm gonna pick on you, Tamir. Let's say that you work for a company that doesn't have Veeam today and your paycheck got processed. You actually had the money deposited in your account, but you went into the software stack to see what your details were of your check and it's corrupted. So you contact support and the conversation goes like this. Hey, uh, uh, I can't see my file, it's corrupted. Oh yeah, well that lives in a SQL database and we'll have to recover that and we'll go through that process. So in the background, what's happening, and this really happens with just about every one of our competitors, they have to restore the entire two terabytes to get your one corrupted file that might even only be 10 megabytes. Wow. So what does it look like? Yeah, so you can imagine, let's, you know, I always ask the audience, how long two terabytes to recover, even from high speed disk? Let's say an hour, two hours. So in that scenario, they recover over a two hour period. They load up the image, they start the database, they go to recover the file, ah, it was still corrupted. What do they have to do now? They've got to go again, round two. Two more hours goes by. They go to recover that file. Still not there. It's still corrupted. Strike two, going for number strike three. Finally, at some point, they recover that. So let's say in this scenario, six hours to recover that one file. Now let's do it with Veeam. We actually discovered the technology inside of Veeam with our founders when they created the software in 2006, starting the company. We didn't release software to 2008. It's called Virtual Labs and Data Labs, and we load backup images in less than two minutes, and any application really ever created that has data in it. We have specific for SharePoint, SQL, Exchange, Oracle. Even applications that aren't on the list, we have a universal restore. And that universal restore, someone asked me today, hey, can we back up and restore Lotus Nose Domino? Sure, what about Novell? Absolutely. So we load that backup image in less than two minutes, the data becomes available, if it's what we had and not corrupted, we copy and paste from the back of image. Two minutes, six That's hours impressive. or two minutes. That's a huge difference when let's say a company does a hundred restores a day, whatever wow. they want to do. And that's yeah, actually I mean, built into our base product. We don't charge extra. Choice is clear to me. I'd rather do two minutes versus six hours any day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing, right? Talk about a time saver and just functionality. It's it, And it's built into the software stacks. So you don't have to do you don't have to you know, create anything or new anything new, uh, learn anything new. It's just a matter of going through there and have a talking track and a process. And we follow a simple process. And that's what we try to do at Veeam, makes things very simple for our, our customers to use. So it's faster and it's got the easy button built right into it. That's true. Absolutely. Very cool. Tell me more about the ransomware protection. I mean, preventing uh, malware and things like that. So it's a great talking track and really prevalent right now what's going on in the industry and the world. So a, a lot of companies, again, make you aware that there's something going on. But they talk, some of our competitors talk about them being immutable or the ability to not have their data blocks altered because they're either running a proprietary file system or a Linux file system derivative. Now, last time I checked, you still have to log in at some point and with the login and password, we know that that is not always a secure environment to have a login and password. So we thought before V10, before V10 received on February 18th, we had virtual labs I just talked about. Now you can actually go through there with functionality we've added it and scan those backup images for viruses, malware, crypto lock, bots for ransomware. 
and clean that out and selectively restore without those objects. So the right to not be forgotten and actually restore without the viruses. Now we took it one step further in V10. So the immutability ob object lock, it's called S3 object lock and S3, just another protocol like we think about SMB or NFS, just a communication tool. And object lock is tied into S3. So today Amazon has S3, EC2 instances. You can actually go through in one click in Veeam software, by the way, we don't charge extra for this in V10, one click of a checkbox immediately contacts AWS and as is an object lock. And those data blocks, which you've already scanned and you've done on premise, which you've thrown into an S3 bucket are now locked. They can be locked from one day all the way to infinity at this point. Now, no one can change that. The founders of Veeam can't change it. I can't change it. You can't change it. Support can't change it for Veeam. Those are locked blocks. So if you've already scanned them, that's the story. And, and the story about it, really, I, 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 drove by, I drove by an instance of uh, a tape vault company. And on the side of the van, it said, ransomware protection. We guarantee ransomware protection. I thought, wow, that's really a bold statement. Two days later, I'm at a, a, a customer conference where I'm speaking, and the majority of the time I speak to partners, so this feels like they, they let me out of my shell and, and be in front of an audience. I get done presenting the ransomware protection, guy comes up to me, he says, hey, listen, you know, we have a customer testimonial, the last company I was at recently, where we backed up an image, a database, 340 days ago. So you talk about tape being, you know, a, a great solution for this, not necessarily always, because when they got the tape back from the vault to restore, there was a bot in there for ransomware. It activated and crypto locked. Now, lock those blocks. The, the criminals, really, because that's what cyber attackers are, the criminals put a ransom out for $1 million. So the company paid it. They're only wow. a $10 company. Wow. Now, the criminals only unlocked half of it. And they said, if you want the other half, I need another million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, and they said, I don't have another million dollars to give you. I mean, that, that's our that's that's our money. And so they locked the rest of those blocks. Company never got it. Company unfortunately had to close, lay everybody off, close the doors on that ransomware. And so I, you know, there's a story of tape not necessarily being the best strategy where compared to actually locking those blocks physically, one checkbox. So today, Cloudian, Wasabi, Zedaria. Uh, we're adding Azure. There are a number of storage companies on that list. As you know, Veeam integrates with top storage vendors in the world, as well as their storage products. So we're looking to add more of an S3 for this product. That's amazing, because I know malware and ransomware is like a really big issue from police departments to the companies that you just mentioned, hospitals. People are getting locked up, encrypted, and you know, like you said, these criminals are asking for insane amounts of money. So imagine if, you know, the, if you think buying a license or a piece of software is expensive today, imagine being asked for $2 million or having your business go under because of something as tragic as this. Absolutely. You know, the, 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 the space that we're in right now, when ransomware first came out, it was really focused on thousands of dollars, maybe 10,000. They're going big as much as they can get right now. They control that and they can't be trusted. You are working with a criminal. It can't be trusted to give you, just because you paid this $2 million or millions of dollars, doesn't mean you're necessarily gonna get your data back. Ben, what are your thoughts on ransomware? I mean, do you think it has to do with the architecture that's being used? Is it, you know, the weakest link is the people in your, in your office and somebody clicks on the wrong link on an email? Like, what have you seen from our partners and people within the channel? Yeah, so I, that's one thing that's, it's it's almost not even a fair game because you know as as you know these companies you know they'll employ these cyber ops teams to try and protect the data you know that's super valuable for the company but the criminals they only need one opportunity to get in there and destroy everything and so it, the situation has changed so you know now now it's it's we have to do everything we can to protect it and if we goof up one time then there's a huge problem and that's where having good verifiable backups and then you can you know verify those backups for you know, malware and then clean that before you restore is just a huge bonus 
Uh, that way, you know, you have you know the data integrity that you need to run your business, but also the, you know, the insurance to know that even if you do have a problem, you can get right back up and running, and those guys don't stand a chance. Perfect. Great insight. So, and I also heard you uh, mention uh, Azure and some other cloud companies that were in there and how you guys can back up some of that stuff as well and keep it protected. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more on cloud, um, the aspects, maybe like core edge cloud and how the data flows? Sure. So I'll, I'll start out with a story. I was at another event where I was speaking and a guy came to me who, who uses Veeam. He's been using Veeam for a number of years at their, their organization. And he was amazed how just for us at Veeam, there needs to be no translation. If you're VMware and you've landed on a primary storage target, you've gone to a secondary storage target and you want to go to cloud, which a of Veeam have 25,000 cloud providers, including public cloud. So if you look at all that space and what we do, there's no translation needed. We're portable. Matter of fact, our licensing model is all about being portable. Whether it's on premise or on the storage device, when you move it back and forth, we keep track of it. We do all the counting and there's no format change. So a lot of organizations that are looking right now to move data into the cloud, be it a virtual machine or even from the NAS piece, they really, you know, the format changes and what has to happen. I heard a story about a company that moved from core edge cloud, put it in the cloud. They thought there'd be a great story there for their company, but the egress ingress costs were off the charts. So let me tell you a quick story. There's an artificial intelligence, self-driving aware cars. They have about a hundred cars in their fleet in the United States. And it's actually critical right now we talk about, it. they drive, to people that don't have their driver's license or are too sick to drive, they take them to the facility and think about all that GPS tracking data and historical all that data. And so they were spending over $700,000 on egress, ingress on with, with their current provider in data protection with AWS. So for us and our cloud story, our cloud story really there is because we own the metadata and we do S3, we know where the data blocks are. Everybody else just sees a big blob and they have to actually download that whole blob. Let's say an average object is about 100 megabytes. They have to download everything. So instead, we know where it is, we point to it, and we just download what we need. So we're looking at saving them. You know, I think there were 700 to $770,000 they were spending a year. Immediate opportunity was to save him about half a million dollars with going with Veeam. That's amazing. I mean, I think about that and having to take the entire library home every single time you're trying to check out one book. <laughs> so, That's exactly the concept. The, the concept I actually talk about is a cassette tape. So uh, Queen, one of my favorite bands, if you look at the end game, there's a song in there called Everyone Bites the Dust. You probably all heard of it before. I'm a Detroit native. Detroit Lions in 1980 had a rookie named Billy Sims for the NFL fans out there. And so they went 4-0. Now, the Lions hadn't won a championship in 1957. So 1980, everyone's excited. Jimmy Steelman records a version of it. Everyone bites the dust. I get to this because if you want to hear Jimmy Steelman just announce the word, the D sound, everyone bites the dust, whether it be Freddie Mercury or Jimmy, everybody else has to download the whole cassette. And a cassette happens to be average size of an S3 object, which is 100 megabytes. So everybody else has to download the whole album. We just download the D being pronounced. You can imagine the savings there. Absolutely. And the efficiency, right? So absolutely. absolutely. Time is money. So Ben, do you have any thoughts on cloud and what your experiences have been with Veeam and any of your hands-on experience? Has it been pretty easy or uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was in a conversation yesterday and, uh, you know, I guess it was, it was even around, you know, Veeam is a backup company, and I was like, well, let's take a step back and let's actually look at, because we had some customers that were like, hey, how do I get to the cloud? What do I do? Uh, you know, I've got I've got on-prem storage, and I, I need to diversify, or I want to I want to try to figure out how to go to the cloud, and, and either the vendor, you know, that I'm with doesn't have all the functionality that I want. And I'm like, well, let's look at Veeam as, as just a way to move the data. Let's look at it that way because it does an excellent job of that and it can move you anywhere that you want and you're not locked into a specific cloud pr provider and you can switch them up. You can move them in between the two if you want. So it provides a large amount of versatility for just one single platform. 
Awesome. That sounds like a really, really cool feature to have in a multi-cloud world that we live in today. So just even more value that Veeam keeps bringing. So it's definitely more than just an SMB play from what it, from what I've realized after this call. It's definitely an enterprise play um, and it provides great value from protection to uh, restoring your data to preventing things from happening such as ransomware and malware um, and it works in multiple clouds. Ben, thanks for your feedback on the cloud. Really like what you're doing with our partner community. Keep up the good work. Kevin, how can customers get started with Veeam software? So reaching out to partners, we do all of our business through partners. So reaching out to a partner to actually be able to get a copy of our software. But even before they do that, they can trial our software on a free basis for 30, 60, 90 days. So all of our software is available for free. Very cool. So you guys all heard that you guys can get a taste and experience the magic for yourselves for free. Uh, just visit Veeam's uh, website to download your free version of the software. Absolutely, sounds great. Let us know how we can help. So I wanna thank everybody for their time today on this call. Uh, I've learned a lot about Veeam. Um, so Kevin, thank you to you for taking time and joining us and bestowing your knowledge upon us. Ben, definitely appreciate insight from you and you know enjoying the work that you're doing with our partner community within the channel here. If you guys do have any questions, Ben, do you want to let these folks know where they can reach you at if they want to get more information on Veeam or they need some help? Sure. Yeah. So you can send me an email. This is for any like technical questions. I'm more than happy to answer. So it's ben.mcguire at arrow.com. And, uh, you know, please feel free to hit me up. And I'm, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with, uh, either with, with partners or cut any of their customers, you know, to talk over Veeam and any of the features. Fantastic. And uh, we have a Veeam sales team here at Arrow as well that can help you with quoting and processing orders. Is there an alias that people can reach out to, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. It's veeam at arrow.com. And I, I work with that team regularly. I know those guys and, uh, you know, they're on the ball, you know, so if you have any questions around quotes, uh, any pricing, stuff like that, please feel free to hit them up. Fantastic. And Kevin, thank you again for joining myself and Ben on another episode of Aero Bandwidth. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much for listening. To contact us on Twitter, use hashtag Aero Bandwidth, and we'll see you next week.